Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with spicy pumpkin pork noodles. That's right, this incredible Asian style noodle dish features a very unusual combination of pumpkin and Korean chili paste, which made for one of the most delicious plates of noodles I've had in a long time. And besides being delicious, gorgeous, and very, very easy, this is also very seasonally appropriate, although I will not be stressing that, since I think you can, should, and must eat this all year round. And to get started, we'll begin with an optional step in something I almost never do, and that would be to roast one of these little sugar pumpkins. And yes, it's fine if the skin's a little gnarly. Okay, we're only using the inside. And we don't have to, and I'll explain in a minute. But if we are going to roast our own pumpkin, we'll do that in a 375 degree oven for about an hour or until our pumpkin's very, very soft, as tested with a skewer. And that's it. Once that comes out of the oven, all we have to do is let it cool down enough to handle, at which point we'll slice it open and scrape out the seeds, which will leave us with that beautiful, sweet, starchy, earthy flesh, which will act as the base to this incredible noodle sauce. And yes, this noodle dish will work perfectly well with canned pumpkin puree, as long as it's pure and of good quality. Right, the same stuff we use for the pie will work beautifully here. And in the final dish, you're probably not going to notice much of a difference. But they did have these adorable little pumpkins at the market. So I decided to make the extra effort. Mostly so I could make a delicious soup with the leftovers. But anyway, whether you simply buy a can or roast your own, for two portions, we'll need about a half a cup. And that's it. Once our pumpkin's been prepped, we can move on to our pork topping, which we'll start by adding some ground pork to an oiled skillet set over medium-high heat. And what we'll do for the next three or four minutes is perform the old cook and crumble, where we start browning the pork while breaking it up into small pieces. And then what we'll do once we have that broken up pretty well, and it's looking something like this, is go ahead and season it up, which I'm going to do with some kosher salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, followed by a little touch of smoked paprika. And once we've added those things, we'll continue to break this up and stir with our spatula. And we'll continue cooking this still on medium high until our pieces of pork start to brown up. And just like the size you break this up into, how far you brown this is gonna be up to you. But I think we do want some fairly significant levels of caramelization, which is why I'm gonna cook mine until it looks like this. And once it does, I'm gonna lower my heat down to medium and I'm going to toss in some finely minced garlic and some sliced green onions. And what we'll do is stir those in and cook this for about 30 seconds or so, just to take off that raw edge. At which point we'll add the last ingredient, a big old spoon of hoisin sauce. And what we'll do is stir that in and let this cook for another minute or two, until that hoisin sauce basically glazes all those little pieces of pork. And besides adding a little bit of saltiness and a ton of savoriness, Hoisin sauce also has a little bit of sweetness that's going to play beautifully off the sweetness of the pumpkin and, of course, the spiciness of our Korean chili paste. And that's it as soon as we think that's looking good. We'll go ahead and turn off the heat and transfer that into a bowl. And as we do this, it would be great if we were left with about a tablespoon or so of that beautifully flavorful fat, since, as you'll see in a second, we'll use that to start our sauce. Okay, so we're going to set aside and reserve this pork mixture, and then we'll head back to the stove where we will add our roasted pumpkin puree to the aforementioned beautifully flavored fat, along with a couple nice big spoons of gochujang, which as you know is an incredible Korean chili paste. And I'm gonna add two nice big spoons, but you might have to adjust that because depending on the brand, this can range from mild to very, very spicy. And that's it, we will finish this up with some sliced green onions, as well as a small, but very important addition of sesame oil. Right, that little bit of mysterious, exotic nuttiness in the background, I think is sort of a key element. And then last but not least, I did a little bit of diced Fresno chili, which like everything else in life, is optional. But I had some, so I tossed it in. And then believe it or not, all we have to do to finish this sauce is cook it stirring over medium heat for about two minutes. Just to sort of toast that chili paste and pumpkin a little bit, as well as slightly soften and sweeten those onions. And then as soon as that's happened, as judged by you, we can turn off the heat and bring our pasta water to a boil. Which, yes, of course is salted generously. Okay, what kind of crazy person cooks noodles in unsalted water? And by noodles, in this case I mean bucatini, which we will add to our boiling salted water and cook until tender. And yes, this would have been easier in a bigger pot, 
But the saucepan's easier to film. Plus, some of our pasta water is going to actually get added into the sauce. In this way, since we're not cooking it in a ton of water, it's going to be extra starchy and work even better. But either way, like I said, we will cook that until it's tender, at which point we can fish it out with our tongs and transfer that into our sauce. And then once our bucatini has been transferred in, we'll go ahead and squeeze in the juice of one lime. Oh, and please note, you're going to see me move the pasta water, just so it wasn't in the way of me filming and stirring. But do not discard it or drain it, since as I said, we're going to need some of that for the pasta sauce. And we'll start slowly by adding like a quarter cup or so. And then we'll set our heat to medium, and we'll start tossing this with our tongs until our noodles are beautifully coated. And while we're doing that, we'll continue to drizzle in pasta water until we feel like our sauce has the perfect consistency. And again, this is something you'll judge. But the good news is there's no wrong answer. So if everything seems fine with just that first addition, don't add any more. But if it seems like that pasta has soaked it up, which it will, then we'll want to go ahead and ladle in a little more. And as with all pastas, we want it a little saucier in the pan than we want it on the plate, since those noodles are going to continue to soak that stuff in. Which, by the way, is why we use bucatini, since it's hollow, and it does a magnificent job of sucking in that sauce. Because of, I believe, capillary action. Oh yeah, you heard me. Capillary action. And that's it after tossing everything together and making sure everything's heated through. And also we have an appropriate amount of moisture. We can go ahead and turn off the heat and stir in some freshly chopped cilantro. If you're into it. If you're not, don't. And you could if you want instead stir in some basil. And that's it once that's stirred in. We're ready to plate up. And as I do, you can really see what I was talking about with that bucatini soaking in that sauce. Right, it definitely looks drier than when it was in the pan, but it is definitely not dry. Right, every one of those noodles is filled with our beautiful sauce. And by the way, look at that color. Just so beautiful. And that's it once our spicy pumpkin noodles are plated, and we've added any of that extra sauce from the pan, we will go ahead and top it with our pork mixture, which we could if we want just simply mix in, but I really love the appearance of it on top, especially once we garnish it with some more cilantro and maybe a little more diced chili, and one more sprinkling of freshly sliced green onions. And that's it, our spicy pumpkin pork noodles are ready to enjoy. And I was so hungry and uncoordinated that I decided to go in with a spoon and a fork. And that, my friends, as we would have said about 10 years ago, was epic. Right, the way that earthy sweetness of the pumpkin pairs with the heat of that Korean chili paste, I think is absolute perfection. And then when you add that sweet, salty, savory goodness of the pork on top, it is just a tremendous amount of flavor in a fun-to-eat, gorgeous, and very comforting delivery system. And while I really do think the bucatini work absolutely perfectly here, of course you can use any noodle or pasta you want. Okay, for something like this, it's always dealer's choice. But like I said, the hollow design of the bucatini is absolutely perfect for this procedure. And yes, if you're really into pumpkin and you want to use more, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the Lord of whether this is more gourd forward. But personally, I thought the ratio was perfect. And I'm afraid if you add too much pumpkin in an effort to get more pumpkin flavor, you might sort of mess up the texture of the sauce. And it might get too thick and starchy. But of course, there's only one way to find out. So as usual, experimentation is encouraged. And speaking of the pumpkin, as I mentioned, the camp puree will work fine. As would another kind of squash like roasted butternut or an acorn squash. Okay, I think anything similar will work just about the same in the sauce. So keep this dish in mind if you have some Thanksgiving leftovers. Since who the heck wants to eat a scoop of microwave squash when you can have a plate of this? Let me answer that. Nobody. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling spicy pumpkin pork noodles. So easy, so simple, so satisfying. And I was going to say unusual, but as you're eating this, there's nothing really unusual about it. Right, the flavors are strangely familiar. Right, so I'm not sure if it's possible for a recipe to be exciting and thrilling and relaxing and comforting at the same time. But if it is, this one does it. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.